Generally speaking, the vessel has been modernized. The fore of the ship has been improved. The newer designed spoon-shaped bow prevents the ship from getting stuck in the ice, unlike an icebreaker with a lean bow. Another big plus, a very big plus, is that the area of the ship's hull contacting the ice has a rust-proof steel coat that significantly decreases ice friction and that, in its turn, increases ice-breaking capability. Thanks to these upgrades, the ship's maximum ice-breaking capability has increased to 75,000 horsepower. I always say that in the Arctic Ocean, the icebreaker can reach any point during any season of the year. According to the shipbuilder's specification, the ship can move along freely breaking through flat ice of up to 2.8 meters, 9.2 feet thick. But you're not encountering flat ice all the time. Ice ridges may reach 5 to 20 meters in thickness, 16 to 65 feet. And the icebreaker can pass through these, not with a steady motion, but rather cutting up the ice like an axe chopping wood, slowly chopping one piece, then another. The vessel's superstructure is solid and stable and it's capable of this approach. It's natural for people to dream of visiting those spots on the Earth where there have been very few people before them. Yes, the North Pole by itself is a unique place in every way. There are only two spots like this on the Earth, the North Pole and the South Pole, where all lines of longitude converge and the Earth's axis meets its surface. But that's not the only reason. People might think about this fact, but during and after the voyage on the icebreaker, they realize they've gotten much more than they expected, particularly at the moments when this huge vessel smashes through heavy ice. It's a fantastic experience to watch. During my entire career in the polar travel business, there have never been disappointed tourists at the end of the voyage. Everyone's emotions run so high, it's always like this. During my first icebreaker voyage, and after an eight-hour shift, I spent a few more hours watching the ship's progress through exterior windows. It's impossible to get this kind of emotion anywhere else. The only truly environmental-friendly vessels in the Arctic region at this time have been nuclear icebreakers. There are no atmospheric emissions, spent diesel fuel or fuel oil discharge, so there is no bilge water on nuclear icebreakers, in contrast to other vessels. Any sewage water from bathrooms and the cook galley is treated in an appropriate manner, and it leaves the ship nearly clean. A nuclear-powered icebreaker causes the least possible damage to the environment. Since the beginning of the nuclear icebreaker era, Tourists have participated in more than 100 trips to the North Pole. 50 years of victory has achieved this ultimate destination every time. Yes, that is 51 times as of now. Indeed, there is less and less ice in the Arctic. The ice has become thinner over the course of all my trips to the North Pole. But this year, the ice has been thicker and heavier than it was during the last 15 years. During the first cruise, we just managed to meet the trip time schedule, even using all the powerful capabilities and resources of the icebreaker. We have not observed ice like that in a long time. There are several diesel-powered icebreakers. They explore the central part of the Arctic at the end of August and September when the ice is the least fast and it covers much less surface. Generally, those vessels, unlike our icebreaker, are not limited by a tourism schedule. They reach the North Pole, that's okay. They don't, that's okay too. They don't have our goal of reaching the North Pole to get tourists to that point. They are not tourism vessels. So until the end of August, it's kind of difficult for ships with less capability to guarantee that they will reach the North Pole. On the ice, vessel capability and variable ice conditions are both factors that impact vessel speed. 
It's impossible to sail faster in certain ice conditions. Yeah, this is true. And you often don't know the condition of the ice ahead. So it's hard to estimate schedules, especially if you've never been there before. So with the ice situation as it is now, a nuclear-powered icebreaker gives us close to a 100% guarantee as possible that it will reach the North Pole and get back on schedule.